Hello and welcome to Daily Prayer today for June 25th, 2021. Glad that you are with me. Let's go ahead and get started. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Gracious God, we give you thanks that through the gift of our baptism, you have embraced us as your own and made us one in Christ's body. By the power of your Holy Spirit, continue to nourish and strengthen us in the ways of faith, hope, and love through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Our readings for today are Psalm 130 and 148, 1 Samuel 9, 1 through 14, Acts 7, 17 through 29, Luke 22, 31 through 38. Listen for God's word to speak to you. Psalm 130. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ear be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you, so that you may be revered. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in God's word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than those who watch for the morning, more than those who watch for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with God is great power to redeem. It is God who will redeem Israel from all its iniquities. Psalm 148. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise God in the heights. Praise God, all God's angels. Praise God, all God's host. Praise God, sun and moon. Praise God, all you shining stars. Praise God, you highest heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for God commanded and they were created. God established them forever and ever. God fixed their bounds, which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters in all deeps. Fire and hail, snow and frost, stormy wind fulfilling God's command. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds. Kings of the earth and all peoples, prince and all rulers of the earth, young men and women alike, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for God's name alone is exalted. God's glory is above the earth and heaven. God has raised up a horn for God's people. Praise for all God's faithful. For the people of Israel who are close to God, praise the Lord. 1 Samuel 9, 1-14 There was a man of Benjamin whose name was Kish, son of Ebiel, son of Zeror, son of Bechorath, son of Aphiah, a Benjaminite, a man of wealth. He had a son whose name was Saul, a handsome young man. There was not a man among the people of Israel more handsome than he. He stood head and shoulders above everyone else. Now the donkeys of Kish, Saul's father, had strayed. So Kish said to his son Saul, Take one of the boys with you. Go and look for the donkeys. He passed through the hill country of Ephraim and passed through the land of Shilashah, but they did not find them. And they passed through the land of Shalim, but they were not there. Then he passed through the land of Benjamin, but they did not find them. When they came to the land of Zuf, Saul said to the boy who was with him, Let us turn back, or my father will stop worrying about the donkeys and worry about us. But he said to him, There is a man of God in this town. He is a man held in honor. Whatever he say, says always comes true. Let us go there now. Perhaps he will tell us about the journey on which we have set out. Then Paul re Saul replied to the boy, But if we go, what can we bring the man? 
for the bread in our sacks is gone, and there is no present to bring to the man of God that we, that, what have we? The boy answered Saul again, Here, I have with me a quarter shekel of silver. I will give it to the man of God to tell us our way. Formerly in Israel, anyone who went to inquire of God would say, Come, let us go to the seer. For the one who is now called a prophet was formerly called a seer. Saul said to the boy, Good, come, let us go. So they went to the town where the man of God was. As they went up the hill to the town, they met some girls coming out of the, to draw water and said to them, Is the seer here? They answered, Yes. There he is just ahead of you. Hurry, he has come just now to the town because the people have a sacrifice today at the shrine. As soon as you enter the town, you will find him before he goes up to the shrine to eat, for the people will not eat until he comes, since he must bless the sacrifice. Afterward, those eat who are invited. Now go up, for you will meet him immediately. So they went up to the town. As they were entering the town, they saw Samuel coming out towards them on his way up to the shrine. Acts chapter 7, verses 17 through 29. We continue with the sermon from uh, 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 Stephen to the Sanhedrin. But as the time drew near for the fulfillment of the promise that God had made to Abraham, our people in Egypt increased and multiplied until another king who had not known Joseph ruled over Egypt. He dealt craftily with our race and forced our ancestors to abandon their infants so that they would die. At this time Moses was born, he was beautiful before God. For three months he was brought up in his father's house. And when he was abandoned, Pharaoh's daughter adopted him and brought him up as her own son. So Moses was instructed in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was powerful in his words and deeds. When he was 40 years old, he came into his heart to visit his relatives, the Israelites. When he saw one of them being wronged, he defended the oppressed man and avenged him by striking down the Egyptian. He supposed that his kinfolk would understand that God through him was rescuing them, but they did not understand. The next day he came to some of them as they were quarreling and tried to reconcile them, saying, Men, you are brothers. Why do you wrong each other? But the man who who was wronging his neighbor pushed Moses aside, saying, Who made you a ruler and a judge over us? Do you want to kill me as you killed the Egyptian yesterday? When he heard this, Moses fled and became a resident alien in the land of Midian. There he became the father of two sons. Our Gospel reading, Luke 22, verses 31 through 38. Simon, Simon, listen, Satan has demanded to sift all of you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your own faith may not fail, and you, when once you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. And Jesus said to them, Lord, to him, Lord, and I'm sorry, Peter said to Jesus, Lord, I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. Jesus said, I tell you, Peter, the cock will not crow this day until you have denied three times that you know me. Jesus said to them, When I sent you out with a a purse, a bag, or sandals, did you lack anything? They said, No, not a thing. He said to them, But now the one who has a purse must take it, and likewise a bag, and the one who has no sword must sell his cloak and buy one. For I tell you, this scripture must be fulfilled in me. And he was counted among the lawless, and indeed, what is written about me is being fulfilled. They said, Lord, look, here are two swords. He replied, It is enough. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. So, uh, several great things. Psalm 130 is becoming one of my favorites. Um, 1 Samuel chapter 9 So we have the beginning of the story of Saul. So remember, Samuel has now gone away from the people. They demanded a king. He says, okay, I will give you a king somehow. So we're we're getting the build up to that. Saul is this young man who is looking for his goats um, and looking all over the place for them. Not goats, donkeys. While he is out looking for these things, they're, they're looking along, and the young man, the slave of his, says, 
I know there's a seer that is in this particular town who happens to be here. Let's go ask him. So they go to see the seer or the prophet Samuel. So this is how um, by, you know, it seems like this very coincidental sort of thing, but Saul and Samuel are just about to meet, and we will see what happens there. Um, not a whole lot is sort of build up for the story after this. Then we have, um, or other the other thing is that's important is that Saul is from the tribe of Benjamin, and that is a very small tribe, one of the smallest. It's the youngest child, um, so that has some significance as well. Then with Acts chapter seven. We have um, Stephen is speaking, uh, continuing to speak before the Sanhedrin and is just weaving this story of the history of Israel. And he start, some themes are starting to emerge. One of the themes that is starting to emerge is that sort of the chosen one, whether it was Joseph or now Moses, are pushed away by the rest, um, that they are doing something that God is with them, and yet they do not have sort of the support of their their brothers, their siblings, their kin. Um, Joseph was literally sold into slavery um, by his brothers, and yet God used him to um, to bring about redemption for his people and a continuation survival. Now we have Moses who is again being pushed away by his his kin, the fellow Israelites, the the Hebrew people, um, because he is raised in this other environment. He's raised uh, in Pharaoh's household. He tries to defend the honor of one of the Hebrew slaves. Um, and in fact, through Stephen says, through this, he is trying to bring about freedom and redemption for his people. And yet his people push him away and says, no, 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 we don't accept you as a leader. Um, that's an important theme because what he is, the charges against Stephen are that um, he is preaching this Jesus fellow, right? And speaking against Moses and against the, the temple, he is starting to make this claim that God's people tend to be pushed away just like Jesus was. Um, and that the majority of the people, like the Sanhedrin, do not listen to them. Um, he's starting to weave those that tale together as he is retelling all of this, um, all of this story. So that's where we are now. And then we have Jesus speaking with Simon or Peter. And Simon says he's, he's going to stick by Jesus. And, and Jesus says, no, I, the, Satan wants to um, sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you specifically um, that you would not fall into temptation. And he says, I'm, you know, I'm ready to go to, to prison with you and death. And he says, no, you're not. Not long from now, before the cock crows, you will deny that you even know me three times. And then he reminds them, this is, this is immediately before, or not immediately before, but very soon before, it's the same evening of his arrest. He is reminding them, remember, I sent you out into the whole land and you, you spoke to people, right? You didn't have a purse or a bag. You didn't have an extra pair of sandals. You didn't have an extra cloak. What happened? Did God care for you? And they say, yes, yes, we were well provided for. He says, great. Things are going to be tough. Continue that faith. Continue that trust that God will provide for you because God will. So those are our readings for today. Let's go ahead and join together in prayer. Satisfy us with your love in the morning, and we will live this day in joy and praise. God of all mercies, we praise you that you have brought us to this new day, brightening our lives with the dawn of promise and hope in Jesus Christ. Especially we thank you for ministries of discernment and governance. those who teach, and those who learn. The community of faith in your church.
reconciliation in our relationships. All gifts of healing and forgiveness. People of God, for what else do we give thanks? We give thanks that Jimmy is recovering from surgery, that Beverly Kay is recovering from cataract surgery, and that Bill continues to recover from his cataract surgery. Merciful God, strengthen us in our prayer that we may lift up the brokenness of this world for your healing and share in the saving love of Jesus Christ. Especially we pray for the church in Europe. Safe, clean, and renewable energy. those who are lonely and forgotten. Those from whom we are estranged. All who glorify you in worship and service. People of God, for what else do we pray? We pray for Kathy, a friend of Jan Ann's who is hospitalized with a broken leg. For David, another friend of Jan Ann's who's having triple bypass surgery. We pray for Anthony, Lynn's father, who is in the hospital with a perforated intestine. We pray for Olga, our cleaning tech, who's having trouble with arthritis. For Bill, for James, my grandfather, recovering from surgery. For John, a friend of Bill's who recently lost his wife, Jan. For the family of Jan. For Pam, a friend of Bill's who has suffered a small stroke. And for all those who are on our hearts and our minds. Eternal God, you are the source of every gift and the fountain of all blessing. Give us such joy in living and such peace in serving Christ that we may gratefully make use of all your blessings and joyfully seek our risen Lord in everyone we meet. In Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Now let us continue to pray using the words that Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, so far as it depends on us, let us live peaceably with all. Amen. Bless the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Thank you so much for joining me today for Daily Prayer. Join me tomorrow for some more. Like this video, share it with someone else, click on the subscription and the notification button, as well as going to our website, johncalvinchurch.org. Our liturgy today came from the Book of Common Worship of the Presbyterian Church USA 2018 edition, and our readings came from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible, the Daily Lectionary Readings for today. Thank you for joining me. I'm Reverend Aaron Ochart, and we'll see you next time. Bye.